Good morning. I am here. Good morning. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining us on Friday's episode of the Roundtable Talk Show. For those of you who have been following the show, you will know that today kicks off the Power by Purpose two-day empowerment teleconference. So right now I am running off about one hour of sleep. So if I start to just sway, you'll know why. Today is going to be amazing. We have sessions, we have speakers, we have an expo. And today's show, we're going to talk to at least one person who is going to be joining us throughout this teleconference. But before we get started with the show, I'm going to ask you to do what I always ask you to do. And that is to go ahead and share this show because we're going to share so much information that by the time you're finished, you're going to be taking notes. So we want to make sure your friends are taking notes as well and that they don't miss out on all this information. Now I want to go ahead and introduce our first guest who is a dear, dear, dear friend of mine. You see her here almost every other Friday. I just love her. She is so amazing. She's one of those people when I'm personally feeling a little down, I can pick up the phone and call her and she always makes me smile. You've seen her several times on the face to face talk show as well. She helps to make the world a better place. And she has also assisted over 5000 women transform their lives. She's an author, a mentor, a coach, a hypnotherapist and so much more. So much more. Good morning to Jade Elizabeth. Good morning, Jade. Good morning, Sharifa, and good morning to everybody that's either here on the call or sitting. Um, you know, with everything that's going on in our world, um, I would like everyone to just take a minute and think about the gratitude that you have in your life. You know, there is so much that we all have, and gratitude is one of the most powerful energies that we can have. That is one of the things that I always tell my clients. It's one of the things that's in my book. And for me, the minute we get into that energy, everything seems to shift. Wow, that was beautiful. I love that. Almost every show you talk about gratitude, it seems like it's one of those things that people would just naturally do. But it seems like we have to keep reminding ourselves and reminding others how important gratitude is. Well, believe it or not, some people have appreciation and there is a difference between being appreciative and really being in gratitude. Mm -hmm. So when someone does something nice, it's you appreciate what they do for you. But really sitting and looking around your home or looking at the things that you have and saying, Oh, my God, you know, there are so many people that are living on the streets right now or don't have any money because they're out of a job and they've uh, lost their savings. And here I am, of course, feeling sorry and 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 sad for people like that. But having the gratitude of, oh, my God, I have a roof over my head. How wonderful is that? There is a difference, and a lot of people don't understand that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So with that said, what are you going to be doing today? What are you going to be speaking out, or speaking about or presenting at the Power by Purpose Empowerment Experience? Well, I'm not speaking today. I'm speaking on Saturday. I have a 10 o'clock slot on Saturday, and I have a, um, a, a 12 o'clock slot on Saturday. And I'm going to be telling women how to shift their energy so that um, if they're in a funk or if they're stuck, they know how to immediately shift that energy so that they can succeed in everything that they do. Mm, I, that's definitely something I want to pay attention to and learn. Now, Jade, I'm going to come back to you, but I want to go ahead and introduce our next guest. And just like Jay, you have probably seen this person before. Our next guest, you've seen her. You, we, she's joined us through this whole show for the last six months. And each time she brings something different. And she also brings a unique voice to the conversation as well as a warm heart. She's always giving giving and giving. I want to introduce Jody DeLuca of Erie, Colorado Counseling, and she is a clinical psychologist. Good morning, Jody. How are you? 
Hi, Sharitha. I'm doing great. And thanks again for having me on the show. I'm really excited about the show today, too. There's such, as usual, such dynamic individuals that I'm looking forward to it. So thank you for having me. And here we are over six months into the COVID era. And <laughs> I, we're doing it. And the world is doing it. And I, you know, I want to just say something that Jade Elizabeth said that's so important that this is a time for us to be thankful for what we have, not for what we want. And it takes, we have to be intentional about reminding ourselves with all the losses and all the negative things going on in the world, we really have to focus in on what do I have that is good? How can I keep this going? And to be kinder to ourselves as well. Absolutely. I was doing my morning walk this morning. That's kind of when I review the guest um, for each day. And I was like, oh, Jody's on. Cool. And then I thought to myself, I said, with this show being about entrepreneurs and maybe self-promotion, I said, Jody can really, you know, you're in Erie, Colorado. Yes. Why do you come back over and over and over again when maybe the people you're focused on are in Erie, Colorado, and this is a global audience? Because I think the purpose, one of the, the purposes of being a licensed clinical psychologist is to help others, not just within the town that I'm the owner of Erie, Colorado Counseling, but to help others wherever you are, especially today with virtual and teletherapy and be podcasts and shows like your own to spread the word, word sorry, spread the word, but not confine it to one area. But as a, a licensed clinical psychologist, I think it's very important to validate the experience of others, to remind people collectively throughout the world, the United States, and even my little town, that we will get through things. To be human means to have challenges, setting goals. All of that is so important, especially in the face of what we're going through right now. What have you, where do you, okay, we've, like you said, and I didn't want to, because last time you were on the show, I said, I kind of associated COVID, this COVID process with you being here. And I said, I didn't want to say that this time, but we've been here through this entire yeah, pro we have. process we to, have. together. Yes, we have. And from the beginning, you know, and I think of that often because my association, my brain has associated you and the round table talk show with COVID as well. But it's also presented as a very positive experience and all the guests you, that you have as well, regardless of our disciplines, it has always come back to what's going on in the world today. How is it affecting us personally, professionally? And for me, uh, having the opportunity and the privilege uh, to even interject or to even talk about the psychological, social, emotional, and behavioral aspects of what's happening to all of us is a privilege. And hopefully, hopefully I've been able to reach others because this is a very challenging road for all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where, 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 have, where do you see people now as opposed to the last six months as far as far as their ability to cope or, you know, are they, mm -hmm. you, are they feeling more depressed, less depressed? Are people feeling um, it's okay now when they're getting into that normal, normal routine that we all tend to get to? What are you seeing? Well, I think that's an interesting question. And I was really curious. I was excited when I saw Dr. Lieberman was on the show because I wanted to get her input too as a psychiatrist is I see it come and go in waves. There will be a pattern of like three weeks where things are calming. People are starting to get into a new rhythm. Uh, you know, we went from the quote unquote shelter in place lockdown to slowly coming out. Uh, there was a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression, a lot of panic. Um, things started to settle. Things shot up again. A lot of it depends on what's going on. The, the social injustice events that have gone on, the, uh, the current political climate. So it, it's, you know, a pattern. It's like a roller coaster. And I think we're all more psychologically and emotionally as well as financially vulnerable with the trends that come and go, not only in the world, but in, in our country. 
Yes, Jody, I'm going to come back to you, but I want to go ahead and get some insight from Carol Lieberman mm -hmm. as well, since we went ahead and introduced her. She's also a psychiatrist and a forensic psychiatrist, a three-time Emmy-honored TV personality and award-winning author of not one or two, but four books. Good morning, Carol. How are you? Um, thank you. Happy to be here with all of you. I'm happy to have you. I'm just sitting here the whole time you're sitting in. I'm just staring at your cats. I'm like, they are just uh, the most, I'm, I get distracted easily. I always tell people that. I just think they're so lovely. Yes, I, I've been doing a lot of Zoom uh, television interviews and I have a dog and two cats and I never, I never quite know what they're going to be up to or whether they're going to be making noise. It's, uh, you know, I... I hope it adds to the uh, to the conversation. <laughs> yes, <laughs> reality always adds to the conversation. Now we spoke to Jody, and Jody was talking. But before we get into your thoughts and your trends, because I always want to know what's going on. But let's talk a little bit about what you do. Okay. Um, well, I do a number of things. I, I get bored very easily, and so. Uh, my day job, as you mentioned, is as a forensic psychiatrist. I testify in civil and criminal cases, um, you know, everything from dog bites to uh, rape and murder. Mm -hmm. And, but my, uh, and I see patients um, if for all different kinds of problems. Um, but, and I write books, as you mentioned, my, my passion, I mean, when I, when I decided I wanted to be a psychiatrist, that was actually, I was eight years old and I decided I wanted to be a doctor. And then when I was a teenager, I read Freud's interpretation of dreams. And that just totally, you know, connected with me or I connected with it. And, um, and then um, at the time I knew from before I went into medical school that I wanted to be not a psychiatrist who like has patients um, every day, but I wanted to spread whatever psychological insights and training and experience that I have to the world. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so that is what I have been doing. That's what the books are about. That's what all the television and radio and podcasts are about. Um, because so many people don't get to go into a psychiatrist or psychologist's office. And, uh, and, and the world, of course, since before I went to medical, or since I went to medical school, the world has gotten crazier and crazier. And, um, and more people, I mean, we know that actually now from studies, uh, statistics, that um, more people than ever are depressed, are anxious, um, suicidal, uh, PTSD. And I just want to add, and I can talk about this more later, but I just want to add one of the things that, I mean, so, so I have gone from a, n a number of subjects have particularly, mainly I talk about headlines, what's in the headline, what's in the news, how do you cope with that, whatever, you know, all along. But I, of course, I talk about cases and, you know, in the news and so on. But one of the things since 9-11 happened, and since I'm a born and bred New Yorker, uh, even though I was in California at the time that that happened, um, I mean, I moved to California. Um, I decided since 9-11 that I would devote a part of what I, my work to uh, helping people cope with terrorism, not just 9-11, which is, by the way, still affecting us, but with the ongoing threat of terrorism, which is still there. And so I have spent a lot of time with books and talks and all kinds of things related to that, calling myself the terrorist therapist, <laughs> which always makes people I love it. What? <laughs> Are you a therapist for terrorists? <laughs> no. <laughs> I have so many questions. I have so many questions. I, I have so many things I want to dive into, but I want to come back to you right quick, Carol, because I want to bring a couple more people into the conversation because my list for you is long. I Okay, before I even introduce the next person, I always tell people, first of all, I am an honest, law-abiding citizen. But if I weren't, I would not be a criminal in 2020. Like back in the day, <laughs> you could get away with stuff. I'm one of those people that I love snapped. I love watching all of those crime shows. I remember one case where these um, bank robbers were better than everybody in the world. They got away for, with everything. The police finally caught them because they were in a hotel. They hadn't cleaned everything. The lady left a fingerprint on the toilet tissue roll. That's how they caught 
her and him was and I was like see no because <laughs> it could be 40 years from now when they finally catch up to you and I'm like no I'm, I'm you guys are too good that's why I'm like ooh, I, I want to have this conversation <laughs> but I might get distracted so let me introduce some more people first Carol Ooh, I'm excited today Naresh Vista is joining us today, and I want to bring him into the conversation because we're getting a little deep. We're talking about a lot of depression, anxiety, and I want to bring you into the conversation because you have an inspiring story, not only about your business, but how you got started. Good morning, Naresh. How are you? Thanks, Sharifa. It's a pleasure to be on. Looking forward to chatting with everyone here. Lots of great guests and topics now, you're the founder and CEO of Krish Media Marketing, correct? That's correct. It's a digital marketing agency. And I also run a, a startup real estate investment firm. So um, this year has been, I don't want to say it's been challenging, but I can share a lot of insight into the effects on, on business and, and employment. Um, and then also government programs and how they have impacted things like uh, business funding, as well as uh, tenancy, evictions, et cetera, because we've had to deal with a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Tell us the story behind how you started your business, though. Yeah, well, as far as my business goes, I, I actually started kind of working for fun while I was in school, work from dorm before work from home became a thing. Mm -hmm. And so when I was in college, many, 13, 12, 12, 13 years ago, uh, I worked in terrestrial AM FM radio as a producer and my experience there while going to school, while going to graduate school, business school, working on wall street led me to work at one of the largest financial marketing companies in the world. And uh, my side hustle, which I had been doing for about four years, uh, my side hustle ended up turning into what now is Chris media and marketing. So I left my full-time job, pursued my side hustle, in 2013. And now we're almost eight years strong, uh, bigger than ever. And Christian Media and Marketing has allowed me to pursue other ventures like the real estate investment firm. I'm also the author of multiple books related to online and digital business and e-commerce and technology. So I've been able to do that. And I've been uh, speaking as, as well. What are you speaking about? Mostly, mostly what I write about online and, and digital. But uh, this time of the year, surprisingly, something that I never saw myself doing, but it just kind of fell into my lap is speaking about the current uh, political landscape, political issues, political topics and the upcoming election. Um, okay, well, Naresh, stay right there. because We <laughs> are going to come back to you. I want to introduce our next guest because I always say this on the show because guests always ask me, except for people like Jade and Jody, who already know how things are on the roundtable talk show. How is the conversation going to go? And I always answer, I don't know, but somehow, some way, there's always an underlying theme in all of the guests. I want to go ahead and introduce our next guest, who is also very con concerned about helping the world, saving the world, making this place a better place and helping the environment, especially for the little ones. I want to go ahead and introduce Fernanda Lazaro. She is the author of children's books, series, The Swarm That Swarmed, and The Case of the Missing Mustache. Good morning, Fernanda. How are you? Good. Hi, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. So the series, Tilson Bugger Adventures, I have the two books under that series and I'm working on uh, the third manuscript, um, the alien in the apple tree, but I can't tell you which insect that is yet. So that'll be revealed eventually. Yeah. Let's talk about your passion for why you decided to write the books. Um, well, I'm just concerned for the environment, but what happened was what actually instigated it all. I've always been writing like through my university and um, I used to work in television. I used to do some writing in television, but I've always wanted to do creative writing. And I had bees. So I was a backyard beekeeper, which is just another name for hobby beekeeper. And um, one day they swarmed. So they, you know, they to the neighbor's house and the neighbor freaked out because obviously there's like these tens of thousands of bees in her branch. And I realized, you know, so then she said, oh, I'm going to burn this tree. You know, I'm going to kill them. 
so I realized, wow, she doesn't know the importance of, you know, what bees have in the environment. And, um, and even as a child, I've always played with bugs, except spiders. This is as close as I'm getting to a spider. But um, yeah, so I just always was always fascinated with bugs and all the little, you know, all the little creatures. And I just, uh, and just knowing the importance of honeybees that sort of started the first book. And, and then that got me to write the second book about centipedes because, you know, we're, we're fearful of these, of bugs, but they actually do have an environmental purpose. So that's, um, I just, I write it in a way, there's three characters, they get into adventure, um, they learn about the bugs and eventually they respect the bug. And, you know, we learn through the, through their own research, you know, what bugs, what purpose these bugs serve in the environment. Wow. Very interesting. It's great for kids. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and adults who read to them. So I figured yeah, a good way to, <laughs> to get to the adult, right? No. <laughs> what made you decide to write the books though? Well, I've always wanted to write. So I thought the story just came to me when, when the bees swarmed that day, it just suddenly, it just dawned on me. Okay. I've, I've got to write this. So that was my creative writing project that I had to get out there. Um, even though I'd actually love to write adult books, like, you know, fiction, adult fiction. Um, and I have some manuscripts funny about mystery and murder. So, you know, <laughs> Carol, so there's a lot of research on my computer. So if ever my, you know, computers ever researched if anything happens in my building <laughs> that they don't want to search my hard drive, but, um, <laughs> you know, but yeah, so I just thought this is a great way of starting the process. And then I'd like to get more into, into, you know, just writing for adults. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So I, I, love I, lo I love it. I love authors because there's always a story behind the story. There's always a reason and a motivation. So often we sit and we think about that book that we want to write and then we don't actually start writing it. So I always applaud anyone who's actually taking the steps to write books. And I think that's wonderful. Now I get to ask all my questions. Jade. <laughs> yes. I have a question for you. Okay. I asked Jody. And I'm getting, getting ready to ask Carol why she thinks the world is crazier than it ever was. But <laughs> let's get your opinion on what are you seeing right now in this day? Because you and I, just like Jody, have been through this pandemic. We've been friends for years. What are you seeing? What are you feeling? You know, there is so much stress going on. And because of all the stress, because that we're not really being guided uh, from the powers that be in in a positive direction, the chaos to me is getting worse. But I honestly believe that God has a plan. And the plan is that everything has to come out and be exposed in order for us to get to that point of love, of, of community, of being together. And loving who we are so that we can share that with the world. I think that is beautiful. Carol, what were your thoughts on what Jay had to say? <laughs> oh, I wish I could be that positive, Jay. You're great. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I asked Jay before I asked Carol, because I was like, mm, this is going to be a good conversation. <laughs> well, to me, thought is important, so you have to keep that positive thought. Well, you know, <laughs> um, you know, one of the things that is unfortunate with this uh, pandemic is that they have closed uh, churches and synagogues, you know, houses of prayer. And so not that you need to be in a house of prayer to pray, to reach God, but, um, you know, but certainly, certainly it does make a difference. And uh, we really needed or need all this togetherness and spirituality to share all of that. That has been a very unfortunate um, circumstance, part of this. And I think if, if, if churches and synagogues and houses of worship were allowed to be open, um, that more people, it would be helping people, more people would feel uh, the kinds of things that you were just saying, you know, that, uh, that um, we're not lost. But I have been making up words <laughs> to, to uh, explain some of the things that have been going on with uh, for example, I talk about Corona crazy and Corona rage and Covicide. So Corona mm. crazy 
is um, what is happening to people, you know, how people are saying things, doing things that are so out of character for them, you know, um, just they, they come up with these thoughts and, and uh, uh, you know, and, or, or even actions, and they're just doing crazy things. And, and as I said, so out of character. Corona rage is like road rage. Um, we are all on such uh, on edge more than before. And so just like with road rage, if someone cuts in front of you, you know, you snap, you know, just like that. People are snapping, whether it's because you're wearing a mask, you're not wearing a mask, all kinds of things are making people snap because we're on such edge. And of course, COVID, um, that suicide related to coronavirus, either because of being afraid of catching COVID or um, all, the, all the changes that there are in the world, not having companionship, things like that. Wow. Mm. I have never heard that explained in that way, but it makes perfect right. sense. It's oh, logical. Let me just ask you this. Do you see a difference between people who are quote unquote essential workers and people who are, I guess the regular, we don't wanna say non-essential, but other people? Um, there's such a variety. I mean, you know, some essential workers are happy. First of all, yes, that was a horrible, whoever came up with that. And I think it was the mayor of New York or the governor of New York. And they've been doing all kinds of, I apologize. (laughs) (laughs) Corona crazy. (laughs) You know, we've been seeing that. Um, but I mean, it's so horrible to call some people essential workers and, and, and non-essential, but that became part of our vocabulary. Um, you know, essential workers are happy to have a job for the most part, um, are happy to have a reason, you know, to be allowed to work and make money. Uh, but they also are very scared because they're coming in such contact with more people and, and they're having, they're having to risk, uh, getting, catching COVID. And in some, it it varies a lot because like in some job situations, if you don't come in, even though you're allowed to come in because you're an essential worker, then you have, you risk losing your job. People have lost jobs. So it's really a mess in terms of the job front and not to mention, uh, small business owners, you know, who are having their own problems. Yes. I want to talk, ask Narish about that. What have you seen as far as working with business and their stress levels and what they're going through? Yeah, well, I work in, uh, I guess you can say kind of IT technology space. And I've got to say um, this year, the technology industry has been a huge savior for, for whatever has whatever remnants have been left of the economy. And if this pandemic hit in, let's say, 1990 or 1995, pre.com, the global economy and the U.S. economy would be royally, royally screwed. There, there's really no other way to put it. But we live in a time now where everything uh, from from healthcare, many mental health professionals here who are likely doing telehealth, using, we're using Zoom for this call. It's the, the tech workers, the technology. I've actually seen an uptrend as far as uh, inquiries, the amount of business, the amount of restaurants, vendors, or essential and non-essential businesses, as the government likes to, to call them. Uh, they've had they've had to accelerate the need to go online, go digital, start taking online payments, start doing more online marketing. So uh, while I would say at least 80% of the economy has been on a downward spiral, there are some pockets that have been uh, growing and, and doing quite well. If I could interject something, it's, you know, in my era, we didn't have technology. So Mm -hmm. one of the biggest challenges I've had is to uh, learn how to use some of this stuff in order to keep moving forward. So um, it's actually helping and forcing those of us that um, didn't grow up with it to really learn and and meet the challenges that's going on today. Yeah, and and. One of the kind of phrases that I keep seeing is that this pandemic has accelerated everything, whether it's our health. Uh, I know I've become actually, I've taken my health more seriously because of this pandemic. 
just taking my vitamins, being on a, a diet program, exercising, doing more cardio, uh, largely because of what's been going on. But even when it comes to divorces, relationships, uh, learning technology like you, Jade, uh, the, the, the kind of number that I keep seeing is everything's been accelerated by 10 years or 10 to 15 years. And look, I, I know it's been a tough year and it's been a, a bad year. But I think over the long haul, we're going to look back three, four years from now, society is going to be very different for the better, I think. And mm -hmm. doing all this stuff, accelerating, kind of um, resetting. This, this is what's happening. Everyone's resetting. The world is resetting. Mm -hmm. And I think long term, we're going to look back and, and see that this is a good thing. It's just we're going through that reset right now, which can be very uncomfortable. Jody, would you like to say about that? Yeah, and I, I, I'm just, everybody, it's so fascinating, the conversation. I'm like, wow, I'm so glad that it's being recorded. It's great. And I do, <laughs> I do feel that the world is out of balance all the way around. Climate, just the emotional, collective uh, grief that's going on. And Naresh said something very important too, value, the value we have, our perception, even now, and definitely in retrospect, when we look back on this era, the value of life and the value of relationships I think is so much more precious than ever before. And in our country, we're, you know, we're very entitled in many ways. And then one day we wake up and it's, no, you can't do that. You can't go here. You can't say that. And what do we do? A lot of other countries in the world, especially third world countries or countries under different uh, government uh, ruling, uh, they don't have the choices that we have. So for us, in many ways, as Americans, this has been beyond an emotional, psychological and financial trauma. Um, I love what Dr. Carroll said with uh, just the different phrases that are coming up, because this is going to be the lexicon, lexicon moving forward. Um, I have a, a patient who refers to COVID-19 as covert 19, but she's not aware of it. It's, it's, that's what she believes is, is what it's called is covert 19. And I don't correct her because it, in many ways it is, it is a very covert and very nasty infectious disease that, that we're facing. So I think the next thing, and what I'm finding with people is, what do we do next? I don't know. What do I do next? I can't keep my kids, you know, quarantined or away from their other friends. And I, I'm afraid to go out. I, I, I do have some people and patients that have become agoraphobic where they cannot leave the house. So the psychological, emotional, and financial devastation, when we start to step out when there is a vaccine and you know we'll see who who takes the vaccine that's going to be another challenge for all of us is what happens next how do we reintegrate how do we reintegrate into society after finding a norm so that's where I'm at with that you know and uh, again that was an interesting question I want to I want to I wanna allow Dr. Carol Lieberman to answer that question, because how do we reintegrate? Well, you know, first of all, I love that covert 19. I know. <laughs> because, you know, with all the conspiracy theories and all that about it, um, that's perfect. Um, I think agoraphobia is a very real problem that we are going to be facing more of. Um, I actually haven't been, I've been doing mostly everything from home, you know, seeing patients on Zoom or on the telephone, um, doing my expert witness work, uh, you know, reading records, you don't need to talk to anybody, but doing uh, what's called IMEs, um, independent medical exams, that's interviews, examinations of the people involved in the lawsuit, I do that over Zoom. So I have been, the only place I pretty much go besides, you know, doing all this stuff from home is to the barn to ride my horse. So, <laughs> so it's been, it's been great other than the fact that I feel terrible about the world going to hell in a handbasket. Mm. But, um, but yesterday, 
I had to go into Beverly Hills. My office is in Beverly Hills. And I haven't been there since March sometime. And um, it was so weird uh, driving. First of all, it's about an hour and a quarter from where I am. And um, driving in there was, was weird. But, but going to the office was really weird. And, um, and seeing the people... You know, there were some people in the streets, not certainly not like it usually is. Um, there were some people sitting on tables at a restaurant, like a couple and and some people at a Starbucks, um, you know, but trying to sit. They really weren't six feet away, but whatever. But there was something different. Um, it was like a hollowness. It was yes. like, you know, um, did you, do you remember the movie um, Invasion of the Body Snatchers? Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, like the world, the people, the, the pods came down and the people that to replace the humans and the people that came out of the pods had no feelings. And, um, and actually they, they, this one couple was trying to get away and the way that they caught them, that they knew that they weren't a pod person, uh, was that a cat ran across the road and the woman shrieked or a cat or a dog. Anyhow, so she still had feelings. So the rest of the people knew that they were still people, humans. Anyhow, um, there was something just hollow in the streets, it, cardboard and the people were cardboard. Um, it was it was really chilling. Yeah, and I can totally relate to that. And I think it's like what Jade Elizabeth also mentioned, the energy, the imbalance. And, and Naresh had mentioned that too. And I, I think, you know how we have to compartmentalize as therapists. And every once in a while, when I'm not thinking, there's this intrusive reality that, oh my God, we are in the middle of a pandemic. And the first time that happened, I thought I was really compartmentalizing, yeah. doing okay, because that's our responsibility as therapists. Um, and uh, I was driving somewhere and a van pulled up next to me. That's right, I parked. It was outside of a supermarket and all the children came out of the van with the masks. And for some reason that hit me, the reality hit me of what we're going through. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is so real. But if I allow myself to go to that place, functioning as a therapist is going to be a problem. And uh, so every day, like you, Dr. Carol, I, I have to find ways. I have animals. I, I'm a big hiker to clear my head and to stay within the confines of navigating in the best way I can clinically. And I'm amazed at how we are doing in the world as a population. And but yes, it's that hollowness. It's it's a shock and awe of a different type. Yes, I think then, to me. Go ahead, Dave. I think that to me, that's why really met, getting into a meditative state and really connecting with God or Source that it actually helps give us some inner peace because he's in all of us. You know, um, Carol mentioned about going into the church, but God is right here. He's nowhere else. He's inside of us. So when we get into that quiet space and we ask for guidance, we give that gratitude and we appreciate who we are and do this one step at a time, one day at a time, we will get through this because all of the negative has to come out. It has to be brought into the light. That's why there is, to me, is so much chaos going on because the negativity was hidden. It was um, uh, sheltered and not spoke about, not brought out into the public. That's why I love Sharifa's face-to-face uh, um, -face because, boy, <laughs> we get in each other's face on that one. It is a really exciting show. That's the reason I was on it a few times. So, And it's one of the reasons I wrote my book. You know, my oh, book's yeah. on self uh -oh. Jay, Jay, did you hit the mute? Jay, you muted yourself. It was getting good too. Well, was I know. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the reasons that I, you know, I wrote my book 
because my self-esteem was in the toilet and when I was younger. And I want everyone to love the person that they are. And the more we love each other, the more we get into that quiet space and love who we have become, the more we can share that out into the world and everything will change because what we see around us changes by our own thoughts. Yeah, and I, I, I just have to say uh, two topics that, that you bring up, which is the spirituality aspect and the news media. Um, I, I think that th this is the news media's finest hour, really the past six or seven months, because if you're forcing the world to lock down at home, what are they going to do? They're going to turn on the TV and they're going to watch Netflix and they're going to watch the news media. And if you become consumed by the news media, then that just adds to the chaos in your mind and in your life. And this is not recent to the pandemic. In my case, back in 2013, I kind of made a vow to myself that I would stop reading the news as little as possible. I would stop watching the news because they're in the showbiz. They're, they're in the show business industry. Um, and so as far as Jade and many of you others talking about uh, compartmentalizing, getting in touch with yourself, going to church, I go to the temple every week. I think it's very important to just be in touch with oneself. You can be somebody who watches a news media and says, I'm not leaving my house for the next five years because it's just too dangerous to go out there. But you need to have, at least I have a deeper spiritual sense of, look, I'm going to exercise. I'm going to take my vitamins. I'm going to take care of myself, take care of my family. If I need to go to the grocery store to get something, I'm, I'm not going to be afraid. I'll wear my fa face mask and I'll go right in. And if you have that mindset, I think you'll be able to overcome this more. But I've seen a lot of people personally, with friends, family members, who are like, I'm just going to stay at home for the next few years and, and not leave. And you have your right to do that. But I think that's going to be much harder to overcome any obstacles that you face in life. Absolutely. Fernanda? Yeah, um, Naresh, I used to actually work in news, um, and that's exactly what it is. It's, it's show business, and that's why I got out of it, because don't believe what you hear. Um, and, you know, get, get the gist of it, understand what's going on in the world, but they will embellish a bit. They will, inst you know, if, if you are someone who um, is paranoid and is fearful, you will, you will take that, unfortunately. So, um, you know, Jade, like you said, you know, just take what you can take the positive, you know, understand what's going on in the world, but don't, don't let it really get to the point where you're just sitting there, you know, um, and it's consuming you. And, and Sharifa, great thing, you know, walking every day. That's a great way. That's almost like a meditative, you know, um, state, I guess, in motion. That's after my meditation. I have to do my meditation in the morning. And then I have to walk. I have to get my mind right in order for me to be able to, to handle so many personalities. I want to go back to Carol real quick. When we talk about Corona rage, I remember back um, a few years ago, there was a case where they called the kid influenza, that he was suffering mm. from affluenza because he actually used, used that as a defense. So do you think or do you believe that people will start using Corona rage as a defense? Uh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm asking. I want to ask an excellent question. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's a, that's a good idea. I mean, I don't know if, um, uh, I don't know how many people have heard me use that term or have heard anybody else use it, but, uh, yeah, I could see that. I mean, if affluenza were, if that was an outrageously ridiculous defense. Yes, and, I agree. Uh, you know, that judge, <laughs> really ridiculous. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, um, I guess that coronavirus could be used in a number of ways um, to try to get out of things, you know. I mean, for example, um, I, I think it was Jody mentioning um, about... Uh, families about, you know, um, I mean, there, there is, I don't remember who was mentioning it, but there is a, uh, an increase in, um, in divorce yeah, and, I that. Uh, and there's, you know, problems with, uh, relationships, of course, you know, uh, for, for every, if you're single or you're engaged or married or divorced or whatever it is, whatever your status, um, there is, there are problems because the doctors don't really know whether you can catch, 
COVID through sex or what kinds of what sexual uh, activities you could catch it from. And so people are hesitant and plus the people are depressed. So, you know, that's, they're not necessarily in the mood for that. Although, although when you're anxious, you tend to want to have sex more, but anyhow, it's a whole big mess. And people, <laughs> The, uh, That's the, good to know. <laughs> 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 It's a stress reliever. I'm just saying, that's why the people tune in to the round table talk show. We like yeah. to We're gonna have another baby boom. <laughs> yes. but at the same time, people are using um this as an excuse because they don't want to give if they if they have the children, they're using this as an excuse to try to not share visitation, you know, mm -hmm. um, the way they're supposed to, because if the other person, their ex-spouse, um has they, they have some excuse you know maybe they're going to work or they have lots of people in the house or some excuse to say that the child is more at risk in that person's house so it's all kinds of you know bringing up all kinds of uh, confusions mm -hmm. i agree mm -hmm. yeah and and uh, yeah and as far as uh one major aspect that, that you didn't necessarily bring up is the economy and over 60 million people have filed for unemployment this year alone. Um, that doesn't mean 60 million people are unemployed right now, but at some point this year, they were unemployed for at least two to three weeks. And uh, I, I know me personally, I live in Florida and uh, Florida is heavily dependent on tourism, tourist attractions. And so when bars, clubs, restaurants, Disney World has to shut down, cruises, when all those have to shut down due to um, guidelines or mandates, that puts a lot of people out of work. And those are people who have relationships. They could be married. They could be you know, boyfriends, girlfriends, mothers, fathers. And then kids, when they can't go to school anymore, schools are shut down. Now, all of a sudden, you have to worry about childcare, making a living, and I think that's added to a lot of the stress. And I've, I've seen, I've heard from, from my single friends uh, about the breakups that have been happening. And it's like this new market, this new dating market has opened up uh, to, and you know, my, my friend, my male friends are, are pleased with that. But uh, overall, I think the economy. Okay. Is, I, mean, I, don't, I don't mean to cut you off, but that's what I tend to do here at the round table yeah. talk show. Cause you glossed over a whole lot that I missed. Okay, what is this new dating thing that's kicked off that was new? I, I missed all of that. Oh, the new date? I mean, look, and, and now, I'm talking about my male single friends. We know we're not going to get you in history. trouble with your wife. She's not even watching. <laughs> okay, like just explain to us what's going on so we could know. I mean, what have, what, what's the difference with your new, I mean, with your single friends? There's, there's more, there's now more available. You just so basically what you're phone. trying to say, there's now more fish in the sea is what you're trying to say in a yes. polite way. But I yeah. have to interrupt with that because ahead, I've had Joey. several patients that have been online dating and a lot of my seniors that were trying to get to socialize because they're suffering a lot. And there is lots of catfishing out there. So there's a <laughs> lot of scams and it's a Mecca and the hacking. And uh, yeah, so caveat yeah be careful with that yes because then we might need dr carol to find them and we're gonna be mad because <laughs> yes. we're gonna need an ip address i'll be like dr carol i need an ip address or something you find him your next book dr carol the covid catfisher you know yes but, yes but <laughs> 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 Can ahead, I say something real quick about that Absolutely. Fernanda said it too about the political climate. I get so many calls for people wanting, wanting therapy to deal with the political climate too. And on top of everything else, this seems to exacerbate, really increase people's uh, depression, anxiety, rage. Uh, we are going to have a lot of post-traumatic stress in the future when yeah. we look back. Yeah. Are, you, are you referring to after the election or after just the pandemic in general? Well, definitely after the election, I'm sure. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. When the COVID era, um, you know, subsides, I don't know any other way to say that we're dealing with a virus. So, you know, unpredictable, very mean infectious disease. But yeah, there's going to be a lot of post-traumatic stress on many levels. 
uh, financial, psychological, economical, relationship-wise. And I think we're all just even questioning who we are mm-hmm. as individuals and where our values And we're all very vulnerable. We're all in that state of fight and flight as well, because that's the nature and the evolutionary design of who we are. Do you feel that we are also questioning who we are as Americans, what we believe in, what we stand for? I mean, because I'm 44. Uh, you know, I don't mind people knowing that, but I, you know, so I've been voting for years. I've seen different presidential elections, but maybe it's just me. This one just seems different somehow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is different. Yeah. This, this, this one's it absolutely is. different uh, because yeah. it's a pandemic year. And like I said earlier, people aren't glued to their TVs watching. I mean, let's just, let's just speak the truth. I mean, it's been the Trump show. It's just, you're following <laughs> The, the media is following his walk from the White House to the helicopter, taking him to a hospital. They're, I mean, they're following every minute of, of, of that man. And even his Twitter, he's, he's part of it. I mean, he's tweeting every hour or two, and he's loving every minute of the attention that he's getting. And that's why I said earlier, look, like you can participate in that and follow every move that that, that man's making, or you can... Focus on other things, focus on yourself, focus on things that will actually improve you and your situation, which you know, I prefer to take the latter. But to me, I think it's also important that everybody get out and vote. Yeah. You know, it, it, whatever and however you want to do, please, you know, if whoever's listening, whoever watches, please be sure you go out and vote. You know, my, my belief is if you don't vote, you can't bitch. <laughs> at least if you vote, then you can bitch about what it is because you at least gave your two cents. So I'm hugging you right now, Jade Elizabeth. That's great. <laughs> Strong <laughs> words. Virtual hug. And I'll receive it. Thank you. All right. <laughs> I tell you, that's I told you, Nourish. I have no idea where the conversation is gonna go. We just start talking and somehow we wind up here at the end of the show. Now we are coming down to the last few minutes of the show. And what I love to do at the end of every show is just simply allow my guests the opportunity to speak directly to the audience, to everyone who is watching this show live, as well as everyone who is watching it in the archives and simply let them know what you want them to take away from your appearance here today. And we're gonna start with you, Fernanda. Um, well, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. You're um, so welcome. And uh, good luck with your election. <laughs> Thank God I'm in Canada right now. So, um, yeah, just, you know what, Be, respect yourself, respect the environment, respect, you know, the little creatures. Every, I always say everything and everyone pl- um, plays a role in this world. And, um, yeah, and that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's beautiful. Narish, what do you have for us? Silence. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, sorry about that. I thought I was muted. Um, first off, yeah, it's, it's been a great discussion. It really, I mean, it, it time flew by, but I would just recommend that people once again, uh, it, it's a tough time. So focus on improving your skills, talking about business, talking about jobs. You want to improve yourself, improve your skills so that when the next shutdown, lockdown, pandemic, recession comes, you want to be prepared and you don't want to be in a situation to where you're struggling with in your relationships and your job with money. You want to, during the good times, you want to improve yourself. You want to learn. And so I highly recommend people check out any of my books. Uh, actually, I'll even offer you a, a free copy of my best selling book, 50 Shades of Marketing, which will teach you all the tools that you need to learn about online technology, business, e commerce. It's available on Amazon, but if you contact me through my website, narishvisa.com, just send me an email and I'll send you a free copy. Thank you for that. And see, you're one of those people that I have to apologize to because I'm always all over the place. I get distracted. I see a squirrel and we didn't even have an opportunity to talk about your book because we were too busy trying to save the world. So thank you for mentioning that. I appreciate that. I hope everyone goes ahead and picks up a copy of your book. Jay. Oh, Okay. Um, Nobody's ready for their two minutes of fame. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, 
I guess the way what I would like people to take away is take a moment every day and just spend a little time with yourself. I know that we're trapped in our homes, but as we're trapped in our homes, we're thinking about what's going on in the world. So we're looking outside of ourselves. We're not really looking inside. And inside is where all of the truth is. And if you really look in and spend time that way, also go out online and find um, classes, find uh, people that you can speak with or work with to help improve your mindset so that you keep it going in the right direction. Um, you can find me at jadeelizabeth.com. All my information's on my website. So thank you. Also, you so don't forget to tune in on Saturday, either at 10 o'clock or at noon to see me at on the Power by Purpose. Yes, a two-day empowerment teleconference. We always love having you here, Jade. As always, we hope you return. Dr. Carol Lieberman, what would you like to leave us with? Well, I think the most important thing that I'd like to say is that um, we need to look at this time, this horrible lockdown. We need to put a, reframe it and look at it as a gift of time that um, because we are more confined, um, it gives us time to do things that before this, we always said, oh, I, if I only had the time, I'd love to find my friend from high school. You know, I'd love to track them down and talk to them, or I'd love to write a book, or I'd love to clean out the closet. So whatever it is for you, take this time and look at it as a gift. The other thing is one of the things that's been so frustrating to me is that, you know, all this stuff on the news and yes, do not, <laughs> do not watch news 24 seven. It'll give you PTSD, but um, instead of that, uh, they don't talk about what you really should be doing. Everybody should just concentrate on themselves and their loved ones in terms of building up their immune system. If everyone worked on their immune system, we wouldn't have this pandemic. And that's easy stuff. Of course, wash your hands, eat nutritious food, take vitamins, take immunity uh, supplements, uh, get enough exercise, get sun, uh, do de-stressing kinds of things, and an hour of laughter a day. So if you do that, you don't have to, and, and stop stressing yourself out. The biggest stress is w watching the news about how every day, oh, this many people died. I mean, of course it's sad, but you know, it, it's not going to affect, I mean, it's only going to affect you badly if you see those numbers going up. And if you want to hear or see more about me, um, you can tune into my, uh, I do a, a radio show podcast called Dr. Carol's Couch on voiceamerica.com. And I do the terrorist therapist show on all kinds of wherever podcasts are sold, <laughs> not sold, but you know, wherever you can find podcasts. And then my basic website is drcarol.com, which is D-R-C-A-R-O-L-E.com. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to have to check out a few episodes of your yeah. podcast. You are so real. You say a lot of things that are unexpected. And I have to follow this whole Corona rage thing, see if I see any cases in the news. And I'm like, Dr. Carol told us that was going to come. Thank you for being here. Jody. go ahead. Take us out. Well, you know, we have to focus on the outcome we want moving forward, not the fear that we're feeling. Focus on where you want to be, where you want to feel, what you want to think. We have to be kinder to ourselves. We have to be more patient. This is hard stuff we're going through. We can make a difference. We can be better. And we need to reach out and stay connected. And if you're feeling out of sorts, it's okay. You should be. These are out of sorts times. So God bless. Take care of yourselves. Mm, thank you, Jody. That was well said. See, everyone, this is why I love my job. I love what I do. I have the opportunity to meet new friends and also chat with some of my dear friends each morning as host of Roundtable Talk Show. Please go ahead and share the show. Also support our guests, visit their websites, follow them on social media, pick up copies of their book. All the information is in the Facebook post for you. Also, when you connect with our guests, please send them a message and let them know Sharifa Hardy says hi. Now, if you're interested in more ways that I can help your business or go ahead and pick up your tickets to today's and tomorrow's two-day Power by Purpose Empowerment Teleconference. 
And you can also find out how you too can be a guest on the Roundtable Talk Show at, at AskSharifa.com. Until Monday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific, everyone have a safe and a blessed weekend. Bye now.